Okay, hey guys, this is gonna be a quick demo on how to set up your document using um, text character styles and paragraph styles and putting some stuff in the master pages. So hopefully at this point you have an InDesign document, you have a cover, you have a section spread, South America, you have the little editorial information, and you have some recipes. So that is where I am now. I set up these different things. Um, if this, if we were going to do a whole cookbook, we would definitely want to create um, some additional templates, which I can show you. Um, but for our purposes of just finishing our project, we're going to at least make some paragraph and character styles for the recipe so that we can flow in the rest of the recipe content and it'll be super easy and super fast. All right, so let's get started. Okay, so if I was making this full cookbook, I would definitely create a specific master page for my section dividers. Okay, these would have a big picture, it has a text box, and it has um, the countries broken out into two columns. Um, I would even say this, these three pages could all be one master if I wanted them to be just because they have photos on them. So if I was going to set that up, I would select all of this information, I would copy it, I would come up to the A master, I would do um, new master, we can call it B, we want it to be two pages, it's the same size, hit OK, all right, and then if I right click and do paste in place or did edit, paste in place, everything shows up, and what I would do is just take out the actual content. Oh, I had a double picture to fix the bleed issue. Oops. So let's get rid of that guy. There we go. All right, so this is a picture. It bleeds all the way around. This, we would make um, a style. So this would be a paragraph style. So we'll go under paragraph styles. If you have the advanced workspace up, that is what I'm working in. I think it's so much easier to work with because you get a lot more information on your screen at once. But if you don't have paragraph and character styles already as palettes on your right hand toolbar, they're up under windows, styles, and then we're going to want paragraph and character styles today. Okay. All right. So, I'm, so what we're going to do is we're going to create paragraph styles for all of your big chunks of text. Whoopsies, I'm gonna do that. Um, and so paragraph styles are the first style that you apply, and then character styles are applied um, over paragraph styles. So if you have a full paragraph, your body text is set a certain way, and then within that body text you want maybe like bold certain words or call certain words out with a different color, those special instances on top of your general paragraph style is when you apply a character style. Okay, so um, when in doubt, just start with paragraph style. So I just go under the horizontal bars, new style. And so if you have some text already highlighted, InDesign is super nice and it re just gives you exactly what that styling is. Um, and it tells you in this little summary area. So it is, this is my font, rainbow ho, um, the size, the letting, the tracking, and the color, and the alignment. So that is pretty much exactly what I need it to be. We're gonna call this um, section header. I think that would make sense to me. Uh, and I'm gonna just hit okay. So the only thing to remember is then you'd want to apply the style to the text. So we actually don't want any text in this box. We just want a text box. But this text box is now has the section header style applied to it. So we're going to do the same thing for the countries. I'm just going to highlight one of the countries, new style. We're going to call this section 
country list. And again, it's picking up exactly how I've styled that word Bolivia. So perfect. Say okay. And now I'm just going to highlight everything, apply the style, and then delete. So more than likely, this text box is probably going to shift from section to section depending on the image. Um, so I think for now, I'm just going to leave it sort of centered under the headline text box. Um, so I think that's probably a good place for it to start, and then we can always go from there. All right, so that master page is good. Um, I can definitely go down here and apply it. Let's see. I just right click and I do apply master to pages. The master. Okay. And there you go. Let's see. All right. So if we were going to go make a new master here, we'll just add a new page down here. Um, let's make these right click. Apply master, be master. All right, and so then, of course, it's a master page, so all this stuff is locked in place. So we're gonna right click again on these little page thumbnails, and we're gonna say override all master page items. This makes everything now selectable, and so we can produce a new section divider. So if this was Asia, and we were starting to put in countries, you can see that they're coming in at the exact correct style. Same with this. I'll just make this box of color so we can see behind it. There you go. So you can see Asia, right? So that is how we would set up a master page for our section spreads. So I'm going to delete this since we don't need it. Okay. All right, um, and then I would definitely set up the same type of master for this editorial page. Um, this page looks like it's only going to be one page. So when you come up here to new master, um, it says number of pages. I'm just going to do one. Okay. And we'll come in here. We'll take all this. Copy. Oopsies, I forgot to say paste in place. Paste in place. Oh, all right, we'll just slide her in here. Let's see. Looks like it's pulled to the bleeds and to the center of the page. Okay. So we'll do that. All right. So again, this is a photograph, but we'll leave that there for a second. Let's delete all this. Let's delete this image. And let's go test it. Okay, let's delete this. All right, so how we have to make this is, this is the paragraph style. New paragraph style. Section editorial. Okay. And this is a character style. New character style. And we're gonna call this editorial drop cap. Okay. So, and then we actually need a second paragraph style that is one paragraph of editorial section with drop cap because the rest of the story, I didn't want drop caps. I just felt like that was too many drop caps. All right. So we're going to base this one on section editorial and we're going to call it Section editorial drop cap. Okay, so it's section editorial. So this is not 
here, hold on. That's not highlighted actually. Let's do it this way, just with nothing highlighted. Make sure nothing is selected. Okay. New paragraph style based on section editorial. And it's called section editorial drop cap. Okay, so this is the section editorial font. Okay, section editorial font plus we want to add our drop cap to it. Which will be drop caps. Alright, so it's one character and it goes down three lines. And the character style is going to be editorial drop cap. Alright, so that should work. Let's hit OK. Okay, so let's reset this whole paragraph to section editorial. Okay, and then I'm going to highlight the first paragraph and do section editorial drop cap. Ho ho, and we did it. Okay, so that is awesome. That totally works. So if I go up under my master, I just want to make sure that this is set to section editorial. All right, so that would be good to go for future use. Okay. So now let's get into the recipes, the part that you actually have to do yourself. Um, you can definitely create as many styles as you want. I think it's really good practice to figure out how to apply styles to your template and then test it out. Um, but it's not mandatory. So one other thing we're going to want to do is we are going to want to change this one from a master to none. Okay, because it's a special page. We're just going to change this one to C because on A, we're going to add some page numbers. All right, so let's add a couple little page numbers down here. Um, all right, I don't even know what font I'm using anymore. Let's see. Oh, Alio. Okay, so back. So paste. Let's see. I'm going to want it to be small. It's seven. And line to the bottom. And let's see. Let's make it nine. So it's a quarter inch off the bottom of the page. And that seems low. Okay. That seems good. Let's do that. We're going to want this to be to the right. And then we're going to want. The same thing over here. So I just held down Alt and Shift to duplicate directly across. All right, so then I'm going to delete out the content and we're going to, I'll zoom in so you can see what we're doing here. With this text box, we're going to go up under Type, Insert Special Character, Markers, Current Page Number. Oh, I guess it helps if I have the Type tool on. Computer's freaking out. Okay. Let's try that again. Insert special characters, markers, current page number. Let me get a little A, and that's exactly what we want. Now we'll just mosey on over to the right hand page. Delete that. Type insert special character, markers. Current page number. Okay, excellent. So if you were setting up this document and you wanted to include not only a page number but a section marker like South America, you could do that too. So how that would look is let's go up under 
maybe our right hand pages will include the section markers. Type, insert, markers, whoop, section marker, and then I'd want a space and maybe a couple cute little bullets and a space. Okay, perfect. So let's zoom out and let's go create some sections and look at what this is going to look like. All right, so this section starts here. So we're going to right click. We're going to do, let's see, where are we? We're going to do numbering and section options. This is a section start. And we're going to start automatic page numbering. So we would like it to just pick up from the previous page. So it should say page five, if this works. And you're going to have your section marker. So we want this one to say South America. Okay, let's hit OK. And now you can see South America appeared on the bottom of my right hand page. And if I scroll down to the next spread, I've got a page six and on the page on page seven, it says South America, my two little cute colons seven. So that's pretty cool, right? And I mean, you could get as complex as like maybe the right hand page says South America, maybe the left hand page says the country that you're in. If there were a lot of recipes per country. So those section markers just help your reader navigate a large book. All right, so that was kind of cool. So I think otherwise our master page, my master page can pretty much just be blank. Um, I'm just using a one column layout. I have the margins established on the master. So I think I am ready to make some text and um, some textiles. So the first style I'm going to make is this country style, so new paragraph style, country name, um, apply, if we just hit apply style to selection, since I have the whole select, the whole word selected, that will save me a step. So now it's country name, let's see, perfect, all right, this is my, let's first create just your general paragraph copy. So in this recipe, I have, let's just look at what we have so you can understand how I'm determining what my regular paragraph straightforward copy would be. All right, so I have an italic font of the little introduction to the recipe. I've got the recipe name, big and orange. I've got my list of ingredients, which don't have spaces in between them um, and I've split my one column into two columns and I can show you guys how to do that. It's a really cool um, little feature. This is all one text box that I've been able to split. So handy tip coming your way in a few minutes. Okay then I have my bold header about when you're starting your recipe and then I have my numbered steps and then that's a whole recipe. And then this was like that little subset recipe. And I would actually say this copy under the boiled chicken dinner is probably like regular body copy font to me. Because it's the 11 over 14. And if I go up under the paragraph tool at the top of the bar, I can see that I have just a space after set. So I think that is going to be my what I'm going to consider my normal text body copy font styling and then we're going to base these other variants off of that. So let's start here. So new paragraph style and I'm going to call this body copy. You can call it body copy, body text, text, whatever makes sense to you that this is like your base style. All right, so it's not based on anything. It is my font, Alio, my size, 11, my letting, 14, 
no hyphenation, please no hyphenation guys, and I have a space after of an eighth of an inch. I'm going to hit OK. All right, so I'm going to apply that here. Body copy. All right, now this um, instructions, these are, if I come up here and look, it's the same font, the same size, but I have an indent happening here and a tab, but I have the same space after. So this is based off of the body text, but it's with this new indenting and tabbing to create the list. So we're going to do a new paragraph style. We're going to call this list. Oh, maybe I'll call it numbered list so it's not confusing. Or instructions. That would make sense, right? Instructions. All right, so we're going to base it on body copy. So it's body copy plus my left indent and my first indent and my tab, which is exactly what is unique. So we're going to say OK. And there we go. All right, and we'll know that we did this all correct when we put in the rest of our recipes and compare it to this page. All right, um, so this is similar, but it's bold. There's no space after, but there's a space before. All right, so that will be a new paragraph style. Whoopsies. Cancel. New paragraph style. We're going to call this bold. I'm going to call it above instructions. I think that would make sense to me. It's based on body copy, but it's bold and there is a space before. So the reason I want to keep saying based on body copy and I made body copy first was if I decide to go back and change the font or change the font size, as long as I update the body copy style, all of these other styles based on that style will also update. So I'm saving myself effort in the end if I have to make changes. All right, so let's do this thing, new style. We're going to call it recipe name. Okay. Um, again, I think I'm going to base it on body copy only because it's, it's the same font. It's just bold and bigger and has orange and it also has space before as well as the space after. Okay. Um, this. It's not duplicate, sorry. New. This is going to be recipe intro based on body copy. So you can see that this is definitely a redundant process. Okay. And I probably could have just made this a character style of italic because that's the only difference here is it's the body copy plus it's italic. Um, but I figured if I'm just working within the paragraphs, styles palette, it will be faster than having to jump back and forth between characters and paragraphs when formatting the rest of the recipes. So that one could have gone either way. All right, so we think, well, we got to do this. Boiled chicken dinner. Let's see. Let's base this one on the recipe name because it's the recipe name, but smaller. I think. Recipe sub name. Oops, so that didn't work because that got bigger. Undo. All right, so what is this? This is really 12 over 14. That one was 15. Oopsies, too many clicks. Um, 
It has a space for, okay, so we'll just make it a new paragraph style. Recipe small name. Okay, I base it on recipe name, but we make it, what did I say it was? 12. Spacing. It has space before, but no space after. All right, let's say okay. That looks good. Didn't change. Perfect. Okay. So there we go. All right. And I just have this, these ingredients. All right, so new, new style. Okay, so this is ingredient list. We're going to base it on body copy. Oopsies. Okay, it's on body copy, but it's the split columns into two columns. So this is just going to do it for me, but I'll show you manually how I did it as well. Oops, let's edit this. We want to take out the space after. No space after. Okay. Better. All right, this, I don't want the space after either. So I'm just right clicking and I'm hitting edit. Okay, so that looks good, like how it was. Perfect. So let's hit save. Now, the moment of truth, let's bring in the rest of the text. Okay, so when you're working on a long format document, the more like text you can have linked together in the fewest text boxes, the better. So how I would tackle this is each country, I would want all the recipes to be linked together into one story. That way, if I have to edit one recipe, it's going to reflow or affect just that one country area. It's not going to affect the whole document, but I could definitely have set up my um, country name style to be work within one text block with the recipes if I wanted to and then that would have made this even easier had I needed to go through and edit. But we're going to do it this way for now because there's not a ton of recipes per country. All right, so we did this first one. Now let's start here and I'm just going to copy to the top of Bolivia. All right, so copy. So let's see, do I have text blocks here? No. So let's create. If you actually just click on the corner of your margin, you'll get a text block that just goes from margin to margin. Just a handy tip. All right, so let's see. So now they're linked. So over here, I'm going to, um, I'm actually going to put in type insert special character um, we want a break oh insert break characters we want a frame break or a pa a page break so if you had a, a whole number key pad on your full keyboard you could have hit the enter key on the number pad and that would have done the same thing but I'm on my little laptop okay oh undo okay so the first thing we want to do is be back in body copy land little body copy okay paste all right so now we have all of our text in here as body copy I don't think I'm going to need this next page, but you never know. We'll stick it in here just in case. Okay. So now it's just a matter of going through and selecting each type of text. 
So this was the introduction and oop, not instructions. Recipe intro. This is the recipe name. These are the um, bold above the instructions. These are the instructions. So you can see how this is a new um, introduction. This is a new recipe name. Okay, so you can see how this is flowing in really nicely. Okay, so these ingredients. Obviously, I have a style that will just do it for me now, like so. I'm going to undo. But how you would do that manually is at the top of this toolbar on the far, far, far right-hand side, right here. You can see I have a one-column grid. I can change that. So if I just hit two, that would make the whole text block two columns. So that's not what I want. But I want is this thing right here. So with the text I want selected, I just hit split two. Now it splits it into two even columns. And you can actually affect the column gutter right here as well. So you can see. So if you had a two column grid going, you're on hit none. If I had a two column grid going and I wanted to have something span both columns, I can do that as well, like this. So that's like a really fancy trick in InDesign, advanced typesetting skills in action right there. So definitely like try that out, it's pretty cool. All right. Sorry for the people crying in the background. Okay, ingredients list. All right, so as you can see, I'm now just gonna go through and finish selecting my text and setting the styles. Um, and then after I've set all the styles, I think then I would go back through and be like, then you can kind of get a sense of like what's gonna fit per page Let's see, that goes with that. So maybe I want to put a picture in here, right? And go through and design the rest of your recipe spreads this way. All right, so um, save your work. All right, so that is how you're gonna use styles to make your job a lot faster. I hope this was useful and definitely give it a try, see what you can do to create some different styles. Okay, good luck.